Now, are you one of those enthusiasts who always wanted to try their hands on Amazon Neptune graph database, but struggled at creating your own graph data models? Or are you just curious about how to query a graph data using graph query language? If that's the case, I got you. Welcome to this next video in the Amazon Neptune Snackable series. My name is Chiranjit Mitra, and I'm a specialist solution architect for databases here at AWS. In this video, I will walk you through a few of the key concepts that are vital when it comes to building and querying a graph data model. Now, although this isn't an in-depth lesson on a specific query language, but I'm going to introduce you just enough of Apache Tinkerpop's Gremlin as the query language that you can use to get started with your first graph data model. We are going to look at the following agenda today. What makes up the graph data model, such as nodes, edges, and their properties? Then we'll take a look into Amazon Neptune's workbench and magics. Followed by that, I will demonstrate how we can leverage a sample Jupyter notebook with Gremlin queries to build and query the English Premier League dataset. Towards the end of the video, I will also share additional details and resources that you can follow to have a jump start on your Amazon Neptune cluster. Now, before I proceed further, if you haven't yet deployed your first Amazon Neptune cluster, I would highly recommend you to follow the links from the description section of the video. That'll help you to set up your cluster using the CloudFormation templates. And that's it. Let's get straight into the world of graph databases. Now, graph databases are optimized to store and query the relationship between different data items, especially in case of highly connected relationship between entities. And we are talking about billions of entities. Each entity is a vertex, sometimes known as nodes. And in case of property graphs such as ours, each vertex has its properties and its own attributes. In our example, we have nodes labeled as cities, stadiums, teams, and English Premier League. Now that we have the nodes, we need the relationship between the vertices, and they are called as edges. Each edge has a type, and it is directed from one vertex to another. For example, teams are related with EPL nodes with league as the label. Similarly, teams are also related to stadium node as where they will be playing. Furthermore, cities, stadiums, as well as the EPL nodes are connected with each other with appropriate labels. In summary, what you're looking at here on the screen is a small representation of a graph data model from our use case with relevant properties and the labels in context. Next up, let's see how we can define these nodes and relationship in Amazon Neptune graph database. Amazon Neptune supports the popular property graph languages such as Apache Tinkerpop Gremlin, which we will be looking into shortly, and Neo4j OpenCypher, as well as W3C's RDF query language called Sparkle. First up, we will be using the cell magic for the Gremlin query language, and we will insert the nodes and the relationship. But how do we do that? Amazon Neptune comes integrated with Jupyter Notebook, which contains the cells. And for each cells, we have predefined cell magic. Let's have a look into that. Let's start by creating the first node, which is the league node. We have the label for the vertex and we have the properties. Similarly, we will define other nodes such as cities, teams, and stadiums. Now that we have the nodes, we need to interconnect them using appropriate relationships. Relationships are defined just as like the nodes in the Gremlin query language. As you can see on the screen, we have several edges added. Let's take a look one by one these lines of the edge definitions and how they interconnect the nodes together. Let's start by evaluating three lines from the edge definitions. The first one says we are going to create a relationship. We will label it as current league. It'll start from the Arsenal node and the destination node is EPL. Just like that, we will add another relationship. We will label it as stadium starting from Arsenal to EM. Let's take one last example that's adding another edge labeled as city from EM to London. Now let's take a look into a demonstration where I'll walk you through on how to create these nodes 
these edges and the relationship between them using Jupyter Notebooks integrated with Amazon Neptune. Whether you are new to graphs and want to learn an experiment, or you are experienced and you want to refine your queries, the Neptune Workbench offers an interactive development environment that can boost your productivity when you are building graph applications. Neptune provides Jupyter and Jupyter Lab notebooks in the open source Neptune Graph Notebook project on GitHub. I will include the link to the GitHub projects in the description section of the video. These notebooks offer you sample application tutorials and the code snippets in an interactive code environment where you can learn about the graph technology and Neptune. You can use them to walk through setting up, configuring, populating, and querying graphs using different query languages, different data sets, and even different databases on the back end. You can host these notebooks in several different ways, and one of the ways is Amazon Neptune's Workbench. The Workbench lets you run Jupyter Notebooks in a fully managed environment hosted in Amazon SageMaker and automatically loads the latest release of the Neptune Graph Notebook projects for you. It is easy to set up the Workbench in the Neptune console when you can create your Neptune database. First up, sign into your AWS Management Console and then open Neptune Console. As you can see right now, I have opened my Neptune console. I have already created a database instance in a serverless mode. I'm going to access the database just to see the endpoints are ready. From the left-hand pane, I'm accessing the notebook page. Now you can see that I already have a notebook available. In case you have just freshly launched your Amazon Neptune cluster, you might need to create a notebook. Now, creating a notebook takes around like five minutes because Amazon SageMaker from the back end initiates those service integrations. Let's take a look into the existing notebook, which is nothing but a sample notebook repository from the GitHub. Once you have selected the notebook, from the Actions drop-down menu, select Open Jupyter. This should launch a Jupyter Notebook instance for you. Here in the Jupyter Notebook instance, you can see the files and the directories, which are nothing but the clone of the repository from the GitHub with all the sample notebooks and the sample applications that you can try on your own. We are going to select the Neptune database directory, and we're going to select the visualizations subdirectory. And from the subdirectory, we will be looking into EPL Gremlin Python notebook. Now, this is the notebook that we will be using throughout the rest of the demo to demonstrate how we can use Gremlin queries to create nodes, edges, and the relationship between the nodes, and how we can query our property graph using Gremlin query language. Once you are connected to the English Premier League teams and stadiums, you can go ahead and check all the different line magics and cell magic. Line magics are the built-in commands that helps you, for example, to understand what's the notebook version that you're using. Also, to have a configuration check for your notebooks, whether they are connected to the Amazon Neptune cluster or not. Here I can see that my notebook is connected to the Neptune database and I can go further on to check what's the status of my cluster just by running the line magic called percentage status. As the status is now being shown as healthy, I can proceed further to create nodes and relationships. Here we are going to use the cell magic which specifies the query language that we are using today to interact with the database and that's Gremlin. We are going to create the league node as well as the team nodes. Notice that we are having all the labels and the properties just like we discussed during our presentation. Further, we will create the stadium node. And lastly, the cities node. Next up, we have to create the edges. And you can see each line corresponds to one relationship. Now let's go ahead and run this cell to make sure that our nodes and our relationships are created. Once the execution has completed, you can check the results by scrolling down to the bottom of the cell. The results indicate the edge has been created with a unique ID, also shows the last executed statement, that's the Carrow Road Stadium 
city has been connected to city of Norwich with the relationship labeled as city. Now let's have a look at how we can count the number of nodes that has been created. The Gremlin query for that is simple as getting all the vertices, grouping them for a count with a label. Here you can see we have the stadiums node, leagues node, teams and the city nodes and their respective count. Just as same as for the nodes, you can also check the count of the edges. Cities, there are 20 edges. Current league, there are 20 edges. And the stadium, there are 20 edges. Now let's work our way through building a visualization for our graph which will show us all the nodes and all the relationships in one place. For that, we have another cell magic available, which plots out the graph nodes and the relationship with their proper labels. Once the query has been executed, you can select the graph tab and you can visualize the graph network. You can use the zoom in and zoom out buttons to further inspect the details of the nodes and the relationships. Amazon Neptune supports several different graph exploration tools. The one that comes by default is called Amazon Neptune Graph Explorer. Now the Graph Explorer tool is not in the scope of this video. However, if you are interested to know more about the Graph Explorer tool, please write into the comments and we will release a new video for that. Now that we have our graph data model ready with appropriate nodes and edges, let's continue to query the graph. There are several examples in this sample notebook that can give you a good idea on how the queries are written and you can also build your own. For instance, if we want to know how many teams were playing in that league in that season, we can extract the nodes with the label team or query the leagues for the nodes they are associated with. There were 20 teams which were playing in EPL 2019 and 20. The same information, as you can see, can be fetched just by querying the node and the associated relationships with other nodes. In case you want to fetch the team information, we can also use another example here, which we are fetching all the vertices with the label team and all the properties. The result shows name of the teams and also the nicknames and all the related properties. Let's go further and in case you want to find information about the team and as well as the stadium at which they played, you can create more filters. Here, we're going to try to fetch node information team and we want to display the name, the stadium and the city they're associated with. The result shows exactly the name, the stadium and the city properties we queried for. Here's another example where we are going to fetch the teams which are based in London. As simple as with one line query, we are going to fetch the city name which corresponds to London, the stadium which are associated. Here you can see we have all the stadiums located in London listed as per the query. Let's take a look at another example where we will be filtering the nodes based on certain characters. Here we are going to use the text predicates to find the substrings. This one line query will fetch us the vertex which has the label team and the name property contains the letters O and U. Let's find out the name value for such nodes. Our example shows Southampton and Bournemouth. Another example is finding everything in the graph that contains every node and every relationship associated with the team Arsenal. Here we can see the name and the age of the team Arsenal, the stadiums they are associated with and the city where the stadium is located. Now that concludes our demonstration for the graph query language to query graph data from Amazon Neptune. I hope that you found the demonstration informative and if you have any further questions, you can always write us to the email address that I have included on the screen. Along with it, you can also follow the links that I have mentioned here for starting your own Neptune database cluster using cloud formation templates. And if you need more best practices and hands on with the sample codes available from GitHub for data modeling, you can also follow the link along. Amazon Neptune is increasingly becoming popular for use cases such as knowledge graphs, identity graphs, security graphs, fraud detections, and many more.
If you are interested in such use cases, hop over to our Neptune's demo hub page where you can review several demonstrations to get an understanding of how you can build graph data and relationship for similar application use cases. With that, thank you so much. If you have any suggestions to improve these videos, please let us know in the comment section.